hello beautiful people welcome back to my channel my name is Lokis. how you all doing i'm so happy to be back again with another tutorial which will be on how to make an off the shoulder six pieces dress yeah it's gonna be a short dress i'm going to explain some alteration you can make to it if you want button in front or zipper at the back you can have it anyhow you like it i'm going to explain all that the cotton the sewing and then you see how it looks then if today is your first time of checking out my channel you welcome my people <laughs> so please make sure you subscribe and check out my other channel pattern drafting with blue keys and blue keys kitchen here yeah. and on social media follow me on instagram blue signatures and on facebook sewing innovation for those that are interested in our monthly classes and the sewing tools you can get to us through the number in the description box below so right now guys let us go over to the work table to make the lovely dress go over what we are making today so this is what the dress looks like you can see so we have a bustier around here then looking at this point to this point, we have elastic at the sleeve region. So we have elastic at that point. And also at this point, we have elastic too. That means it is a very puffy, puffy sleeve. Now looking at the dress, we have a bustier fitted to the waist and then free at the, from the waist downward. Now you can decide to have like the one I have on the thumbnail whereby we have buttons in the middle. You can have something like that which is also beautiful and we will explain how you go about that and then you could have zipper at the back so the buttons will be here but everything is still inside the busty and the flare also if you want a zipper at the back then you can also have that so we decide as we go on but i would prefer the one that has a zipper at the back but it is the same concept now so looking at the pattern paper I have all my measurements inserted. First, you need the length of the dress. So here, I want the dress to be 38, 39, but I measured out 40 inches. So here, I have 40 inches. As you can see here, that's the end of the dress. That's important. So after measuring that, then I inserted the vertical measurement. First, from the nape, to half of the ham hole measurement. So for her, because this is a medium size, not for me, it's a seven and a half inches. You make a straight line. Then going to the bust point, that's from the nape of your neck to the highest point of your bust. For her, it is 10 and a half. Then going to under the bust, that is from the nape of your neck to wherever your brass tops underneath. So that is 13 and a half for her. Then her waist is 17 keep 23 then the length which is 40 plus seam allowance after doing that the next thing is to determine how off you want the dress to be so on the half rate between five and five and a half is just fine that totally depends on your preference so for the seam allowance half an inch is okay especially if you are using a bias strip or lining let me just make it five and a half. So that's where it's going to be off from. But for somebody that don't want it to be two or five inches, it's just fine. After doing that, the next thing you're going to do is to insert the bust pan measurement. That is the distance from one input to the other. For her, it is eight inches. So half of that is four inches then i had it extra half an inch to that to make it four and a half that is because we are going to be adding all our same allowance to the pattern and then you will need because this part will be separated so you need half an inch to join it that was why i had it the extra half an inch to have four and a half so from the boss point it should be inserted on the boss point straight to the end of the dress after doing that then i'm going to come to the upper part to make the bustier line so first mark three inches which is here then just divide whatever you have left by two so here i have four and a half that should be two and a quarter from that point i'm just going to connect to the bust point okay the next thing is to start taking in the dart on the waist this is the waist 
because it's for a medium price size person that is not really busty so i'm just going to make sure i take half an inch or three quarter on both sides like for me i can make it three quarter to one inch because i'm a plus size so for her just half an inch is fine on both sides or three quarter depending on how busted the person is so half an inch on both sides under the bust here i'm gonna go in quarter inch more than the half an inch meaning i'll have three quarter inch on both sides Next thing is to get a ham hole curve. That's good. So coming to the upper part now, what I'm going to do is to take in whatever I took at the under bust region, which is three quarter inch on both sides. So now on this other side of the that I'll just advise you to go in quarter inch more. So this is to try as much as possible to make it cover up the boobs and make it so fitted. So now you can connect to the boss point. Like for a plus size, I will do more than this because if I'm having three quarter inch here, that means I'll be having one inch here. If I'm making one inch here, that will be one and a quarter. So for a plus size person, you'll have it more at the upper part. So having done that now, just connect from the waist to the hip straight down. Even though we don't really need that. Next thing is to insert the horizontal measurements to the measurement and then the seam allowance. So the first thing will be the bust measurement which I will insert on the chest line so for her it is 38 when I divide that into four I'm going to be having nine and a half so all I have to do is to mark nine and a half note that so now let's go back to the dart we two so first you need to note the dart that passes through the chest line that's very important because we need to add it back so here I have one inch passing through this point one inch so just note that by the side one inch fine now you need one inch for the size seam allowance then one inch to join up this panel half on this side half on this side so that is one so one for the that seam allowance and the size seam allowance total to two plus the one inch that passes through this that makes it three i will have to have three inches to that nine and a half for seam allowance at the point having done that now we go to the waist for the waist it is 15 it is 30 inches for her so all i have to do is to divide that into two which will be 15 inches so when i divide into two again i'm going to have seven and a half so that is seven and a half note that seven and a half so the next thing is to note the that the dart that we took here was half an inch on both sides, which is one inch. Then we need one inch to join both panels, half an inch side. That makes it two. One inch for the size seam allowance, that makes it three. So I'm going to have three to that. And that's what we have. So let me just connect that. So let's quickly have the hip measurement. So the hip is 40 inches. When I divide that into four, I'm going to have 10. Good, that's 10. Now, there's there is no that passing through this point, but you will still need half an inch on both sides because we are cutting through, that's one. One inch for the side, that is two. So I'll add extra two to that. Now let me just comment that. So in case you are not making a six pieces flare dress, you can just make it just a straight dress so if you are making a straight dress you can just make use of the same pattern but in that case you'll be using your hip curve here but because we are still going to have flare that is why i'm not doing that but 
If you are making a straight dress, make sure you use your hip curl. Let me see that. So having done that now, we go over to the, before we go to the end of the dress, let's quickly finish the upper part. Now, you need to determine your neckline here. And how do you do that? Just take the measurement from one brass strap to the other brass strap for yourself. Like for me, it is 10 inches. For her, it is eight and a half. So when I divide eight and a half into two, that should be four and quarter. So note that four and quarter. Then we will need half an inch to join these sides together. Half on both sides, that is one. So I'm going to add that one to it plus one inch. So that will give me five and quarter. Can you see that to be the neckline? So the neckline will be five and quarter. You don't need to have some allowance to this area. First, I'm going to measure with my measuring tape before the dart. I'm not calculating the dart. So here I have four inches and one bar. Then I'm going to continue from here and then mark it. So this is it. So this is what I have for the measurement of the neckline. It is time for us to connect from there straight to the bust line. But because it is an up the shoulder, you have to come down half an inch that's very important just to give you some ease around that region. So now I can connect it. So use the straighter part of your hand hole. Or this is what I have now. But in case you are leaving your neckline straight, you can add extra half an inch for the I'm wholesome allowance but the reason why I'm not having that I'm going to explain that that's if you want a curved neckline because if you want a curved neckline there's going to be a little bit of wideness again so that is why I am not adding extra seam allowance for the ham hole so if I want it to be a bit curved I'm just going to come down by either half an inch or three quarter inch it depends on your preference so I'm going to do it half an inch Now that we have made the curve, so we need to confirm the dart, the length of the dart. So what I'm going to do is this. Just confirm the dart now since we've made the curve. What is the measurement we have here? Like here, I have measurement of 5. So you are going to rotate it to have that same 5 here. So for that 5, it is here. Can you see that? So just connecting a straight line to the edge here. So by the time we cut it all out to sew it, everything is just going to match up. So now let's quickly go to the lower part. The lower part, all I'm just going to do is to take the measurement of whatever I have here, which is 12 inches, and measure that here. But if you are not having a flat dress and you just want to make a straight dress with this, make sure it is tapered. Remove one and a half from whatever you have here and then measure that here so that it will be tapered and not just straight but because we are making a different dress that is why we just have to make it straight so we are good to go before we cut it out now let me explain if you want a button in front of your dress that is very simple for the button allowance all you have to do is to add extra one and a half inches all down on the pattern so that means it will be cut on fold if you want a button so this is going to be the button allowance so you fold half then the remaining one to just have it perfect or you could make it up to two inches depending on how you want the placket to be wide so if not in that case you need to make this place straight after curving it to this point just make this point straight that is if you want a button but if you don't want a button in front this point is going to be cut away or you can just fold it so now I'm going to cut the dart off.
this is what the pattern looks like so looking at it can you see how beautiful that went so in case you want the button then you have to make this off this this is what you'll be having but since i don't want that i'm going to cut this off so now let's quickly go to the back for the back before you start at all you need to leave the zipper allowance so this is it i left half an inch but i would advise you to just leave one inch for your zipper allowance then you need to just measure half of your ham hole measurements which is seven and a half for her then the waist we don't need the bust here the waist which is 17 then we need the hip measurement and then the length after doing that then you need half of the bust fan measurement which was four inches it is eight divided by two that is four then plus the extra half an inch like we had it for the front so it is four and a half so measure the four and a half right from the chest line straight to the end of the m and then you determine how half so i'm using the same thing as we use for the front which is five and a half inches so from that five and a half inches you draw a line and then you extend that bust bar measurement up here we don't need a dart at the upper part at all so you leave it that way so having done that now the next thing is to come here and then add half an inch dart at the back that's the standard for the back half an inch on both sides then you connect to the chest line and to the hip line so that is it so now for the horizontal measurement all we have to do now is to insert the same thing the bust is 38 divided by 4 is nine and a half nine and a half inches since there's no dart here but we need half an inch on both sides to join it up after splitting this that's one inch one inch for the size similar one that is two so you have two to nine and a half which will give you eleven and a half now i'm going to the waist the waist is seven and a half so remember we took one half an inch on both sides that is one after that one we need half an inch to join the sides together that is two again one inch for the dart one inch to join both panels together two then one inch for the size similar one that is three so we are going to have three to seven and half one two three so that is ten and half everything after the zipper allowance now I'm going to the hip the hip is 10 inches that is 40 divided by 4 that is 10 then we need to add one inch to join this part because there's no dart here and then one inch for size same allowance 2 so 2 plus 10 that gives us 12 so the same 12 inches is there to be added to the hem line that is very easy since we've done it for the front so just come down by half an inch the same way we made the curve so good so the next thing you are just going to do to make it easier for you just take this is the side of the front panel remember we are going to come down by half an inch here too just put it at that point. Can you see that? At that point. And I'm going to connect it. Because everything has to match. So you just leave this straight. And that is it. So the next thing I have to do now is to cut it all out. It's what the back looks like and the front looks like so the next thing is to cut it on the fabric for the fabric i have to just fold it this way and then place the pattern on it for the middle panel now i'm working on the front for the middle panel you do only have the flat to the side and not to the other side except you're having the eight pieces so this is what you are going to have and then for the other side you have flare on both sides 
or the pattern. So the amount of fabric to have the pin on your preference and then how long or short the dress is. For instance, if you are making a very short dress, addition of four to five inches is just fine today, lower part, or, and then if it is a long one, you might need to add up to nine, 10, depending on how short or long the dress is. So that is what will determine the flare. So let me just add between six to seven to that. And then you connect from the waist. Note, this is the hip, so you connect from the waist. This is the hip, you connect from the waist. So I just did seven inches. So after doing that, the next thing is to come up by one inch. This is one inch. And then connect to the hand of the pattern paper. So that is it. We are done with that. So you are just going to cut this off because we have added the same allowance to all others. It's only the flare. So you come to this other part too. I haven't made a straight line. Measure the same seven inches. Also to the other side, seven inches. Connect straight to the waist. by one inch next to the end of the pattern paper I'm going to do the same thing here then I'll just cut it out the way it is now this is the middle panel uh, the front panel the middle and then the side you can see I have flare on both sides so that's just how I'm going to do that so the same way I cut for this front panel i'm going to cut the back the same way back panel on the actual fabric i'll be making use of i had to use the lining because it is visible for you to see what i'm making i have i have cut out the back panel on the actual fabric i'll be using i had to use the initial lining so that you can see what i was doing on like this very one that is very busy so I cut it out on the actual fabric. So looking at it, this is the side I had flared on both sides, six inches on both sides, depending on how long the fabric, uh, your dress is. So it determines how much you had to eat. So this is the back. This is the zipper allowance. I had six inches to both sides. So we have flare on both sides of the panel. So that is the back. Then the front we did initially, this is it So I've actually cut that too on the actual panel. The next thing now is to cut out the sleeve. Then for this very one, you can afford to pad it. But for me, I'm just going to make use of this interfacing just to make it stable for the upper part. In case you are interested in knowing how to pad your blouses, I have a video on that, which I'll put the link in the description box below. Sleeve, all you need is two pieces of fabric because we are cutting out two sleeves. So looking at it, I just fold it over. I haven't done that now. You determine the length of the sleeve you want. It's going to have elastic on the upper part and the lower part. So for the actual sleeve, I want it to be 16 inches from here. Because it's still going to have elastic casing of one and a half inches. That's why it's so long. Looking at the upper part, I have extra one and a half inches. That is for the elastic casing at the upper part. This is going to be folded inward. Then the width of the sleeve, here I have 15 inches. How did I arrive at that? All I did was to take half of the ham hole measurement and multiply that by two. For her, it is seven and a half. So that's seven and a half times two to give me 15. The next thing is to insert the cap's height from here. Four inches for her, that's what I have here. So having done that now, the next thing I'm going to do is to take one side of both either the front or the back panel take the pattern 
if it is the fabric, you can take the fabric or the paper, any one, place it at the end here, and you see, and then just rotate it upward to touch the upper line, and then you connect. Pull this upper part in. You might see this looking this way, but it's going to make sense by the time we start sewing it up. Can you see? It's going to be folded this way. Can you see what we have? So that was why we did it like that. So having cut out the sleeve, let us start sewing the dress. It is time for us to start sewing. This is the front panel of the dress. And as I've told you, I just made use of interfacing the lighter one to just give it stability. You can pad it if you want, or just put layers of this light interfacing. It works perfectly. Then what I'm going to do now is this, make sure the right side of one side is facing this side and I'm going to start from the hem of the dress and just sew in half an inch because that was what we left in the upper part. I'm going to do the same thing to this other side too. From the lower part, I'm just going to sew it to the upper part and then use a bias strip to hem the upper part of the neckline. Then for the back, this is what that looks like. So this is the part where we have the zipper allowance. So since there's the zipper allowance, we don't need to join everything together, just two each. You join this together, join this together. Let me see this. So I'm gonna join this hole. Then also make sure right side are facing each other and then I'll join it up and also hem the neckline. Eyes have sewn it up, can you see? I've sewn that and also here. So all you have to do is to notch the spot area and then on the right, this is what it looks like. So I'm not giving it a good press. So can you see by the time I give it a good press, the cup comes out so well. And you see that now let's check the neckline can you see that can you see the neckline so all i have to do is to use a bias strip to hem just from here to here and another thing is if you are making use of a lining so you cut it the same way as you cut the fabric and just turn it up with the lining and that's all now for the back we have two piece can you see that too so this is the zipper allowance. Can you see the neckline too? So awesome. So what I will do now is to go and hem the neckline. And after hemming the neckline, all I just have to do is this. Place both the front and back together on each other. Right side facing each other. Then I'm going to sew in one inch. Because remember we left one inch. From the beginning, note the waist straight down. So when you are sewing it, when you get to the waist area, just try to reduce, make sure the one inch gets to the waist area. So from the waist area, just try to reduce it to half an inch so you get to the end. So and then so the other side. So now, see how beautiful the dress is taking shape. I love that. So this is the opening, the zipper opening. So I've sewn it by the sides. Can you see the one inch, the one inch hem? And on the right side, This is what we have. By the time we give it a good press, it's all gonna come out nice. So looking at the upper part, I have hem it with a bias strip. I made a bias strip out of the same fabric to make that. And you see, so awesome. So the next thing now is to go to the sleeve. This is what our sleeve look like. Can you see that? So the first thing you're gonna do is this, open it up, fold the upper part, so after doing that, the next thing is to fold half an inch. First you fold the one and half, then half an inch, all through. And then you're just going to sew it all down. So after doing that now, the next thing, this should be the wrong side, on the wrong side. The first thing you are going to do, you go back to your dress, 
take the measurement of whatever you have on the ham hole opening, that would be a guide. Although if you follow everything, everything will just be intact. So you measure that from the end, from the beginning of the ham hole straight here. So wherever you stop, you just take your, so you take to the sewing machine to sew it straight down. So let me quickly do that. So the upper part, can you see that I folded that all through and then I sewn the side. So the next thing I did was to fold this part too because that's good big elastic casing for the lower part. But I will just advise you to trim this off so that it's not going to disturb your elastic passage. So can you see? So I just folded one and half again at the lower part this way after sewing the side. So what I'm going to do again is to go back to the sewing machine, just fold in half an inch can you see and i'm going to sew it all around and when it when i get to this side because it is better to leave this side open so that you can you won't find any difficulty passing the elastic through so i'm just going to leave about two inches opening to pass in the elastic so let me quickly just sew that all around so i left the opening here so this is the point where i'm going to pass the elastic all around and then sew it up so I haven't done that now. The elastic I have here is nine inches. So this is it. I have nine inches elastic for the upper part. Now it is after attaching to the dress that we are going to fix this elastic. So first now go to the other upper part. So you're just going to pass your elastic through it and then tack it at the other part, which is what I've done here. So when you look at this very one, I've attached the elastic of nine inches and then secure with a zigzag stitch. So this is what I have. So having done that, the next thing you're just going to do is to attach to the dress. So this is it. So you just match it up at the side this way. And pin it down. Good. Can you see? Because we've measured it, everything is just intact. Can you see that? Can you see that beautiful? So what I'll do now is half an inch, then just sew it continuously, and then hand it at the other part here. Can you see that? So when you match this, can you see everything just matches around? So what I'll do is to join it to the shoulder to have something like this. So I'm going to fix this and then the other side. You can see the dress is taking shape and looking so beautiful. So I've attached the sleeve to it, as you can see, half an inch. Can you see that? And everything just matches perfectly. So as you can see, so for the elastic, for this lower part, I'm just going to make that eight, eight inches for the elastic at the lower part. So looking at the dress all down, can you see how wonderful it is? So the next thing we are going to do now is this. I'm going to turn it back to the wrong side and then close the back and add the zipper. So this is the opening at the back for the zipper. So everything should match, that's good. So the next thing is to note where your zipper will stop. So this is the waist. You can do about six inches below the waist or five, depending on how tall you have. So for instance, if my zipper is going to stop here, I'm just going to come to this point and go in by one inch or half an inch. I left half an inch for the zipper allowance. So I'm just going to take half an inch and then screw it straight down. And after doing that, I'm just going to fix in the ZP elastic at the lower part. It just looks so beautiful. So this is the front. This is what the dress looks like. And you see the. Don't forget to hem the lower part. So on the back, you can see I've closed the lower part. So this is the opening for the zipper. Whereby I'm just going to fix in the zipper. So that is it on how to make this beautiful dress. Let me just place it on the mannequin for you to see that. This is the result of the of the shoulder six pieces dress we just made you can see this is just so beautiful 
I'm please make sure you give it a try and tag me on Instagram, Blue Key Signatures, and on Facebook, Sewing Innovations. If this tutorial has been helpful, please give me a giant thumbs up and make sure you share the link with your family and friends. I remain your girl, Blue Key. Bye, guys.